Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. In this episode, we're going to see how we can leverage the transformations of layout guides to help us build complex shapes that contain some kind of repeated pattern or symmetry or something like that. Because at Code Slicing, there is nothing worse than doing more work than we have to, especially when that work is repeating ourselves. So let's see how we can avoid that when building shapes. Right, if you haven't seen the last episode, I do recommend going back and watching it because it sets up a lot of what we're doing here today and I wouldn't want you to get lost. And in this episode, we're going to be commenting out the polar layout example and uncommenting the grid layout example. So we can use that going forward. Let's uncomment that and see what we get. Okay, what we've got is a very familiar grid layout. And what I want to create is a square that animates to a cross. Okay, so there are concepts I'm going to be using here that we covered in the animating points episode. So go back and watch that if you're feeling a little rusty. Uh, but I think it all should be fairly self-explanatory. Uh, so let's go down to our shape and stop building something. There's the other one. Right, here we are. So we've got our layout guide that we are laying out in the rectangle. Lovely. And I'm going to start building up this uh, shape. And in the process, I'm going to show you a nice technique, which is a real time saver when you're talking about creating repeated patterns that could take a while to construct. Because this is all about saving time, isn't it? And the first thing I'm going to do is move to the top. Like this. Path, move, G, top. So I've moved to the top, but you can't see it. And then we're going to draw a line to 2, comma, 0. And then I'm going to draw a line to the corner. G, 3, comma, 0. And then another line to 3, comma, 1. And then another line to the trailing edge. Uh, that doesn't look very impressive right now. It doesn't do anything. So let's just make that animate. And we do that by sending this point, the one in the corner, we're going to send that to g2, comma 1, with a factor of animatable data. This should animate when I click on it. There it is, animating from a square to a cross. At least one quarter of it works. And this is what I meant by when you've got some kind of a complicated design, we want to repeat. Well, you can use layout guides to transform things and then trace over them again. So if you've got a pattern here from line 85 to 90, which is working for you, and you want to rotate that, say, then you're quite free to do that. And once you've rotated your layout guide, you're referring to the same coordinates, which may or may not represent points that have been transformed in some way. So let's put this in a little for loop. So we can say, for corner in, we're going to do this four times, put it around all of this. Um, now, if we're the first corner, then we want to do this move. We don't want to do this move for the other ones. Um, and it's not looking great at the moment. All right, we haven't rotated this thing. So for each of these corners, we're going to rotate it. So we're going to say, that our local G is equal to G rotated 90 degrees times the corner index. And then we just use it here. So I rename these to be LG. And there we've got it, look. So now that we're using this local rotated one, it's recreated our template by rotating it 90 degrees each time. And there we've got are animating square to cross. You might be wondering why I created a local one, and that's because I wanted to be able to control the rotation precisely. I didn't want to be rotating something that had already been rotated. If you put that rotation at the bottom of the iteration, you could absolutely say, now rotate it 90 degrees, another 90 degrees, another 90 degrees. So you can do that in a cumulative way, absolutely. I just chose to control it explicitly uh, in this case. Uh, now, what, what about if we wanted to scale and do some fancy rotations? 
you are restricted in some ways. And this gets us to the order of transformation. In the same way that ordering of modifiers is important, the ordering of transforms is very important as well. Because if you transform something by rotating it and then offsetting it, that is a very different result from if you offset something and then rotate it. What we do know in this case, if you haven't done any offsetting, then you can scale and rotate things in pretty much any order. And because of the nature of those transformations, the order will not affect anything. So we could do this. I could say, for example, I could scale it 0 0.5 and it works exactly as before, just smaller. We could also rotate it. 360 degrees with a factor of animatable data, like that. This is what I was saying, in that no matter how complex your design, even if the points inside that layout guide are animating, everything will just work, as long as you are animating layout guides and then using those to define your points in your design. What about if I wanted to do the same thing that we did with the circle? I wanted to offset it as it rotates from left to right. Then you have to be careful, because watch this. If I said x offset from minus rect half width to rect half width with a factor of animatable data, you might spot a small problem. Can you see it? Can you see the problem? So why is this? Well, it's because we are not being careful about the order of our transformations. We are offsetting something, and then down here on line 90, we're then rotating it. Well, I mean, that's just crazy, but that, that's not going to get us where we need to be. What we actually need to do is to offset the rotated version, like this. So I need to move that down to here. and then we're absolutely fine. If we want to be precise about this, <laughs> then we go one over pi. Right, there we are. Okay, so now it's rolling properly. So that's what I mean when I say we really need to be careful about the um, order in which we do these things. Let's bring in another more complex example to show us how we can actually repeat shapes in their entirety using layout guide transformations. And I'm sure you recognize the animated heart that we built over the course of the Bezier Curves episode and the Animatable Points episode. And so all we're going to do is take this relatively complex design and we're going to repeat it in a circular pattern. And I'm just going to show you how easy that is going to be. I'm just going to stop that. And the first thing we're going to do is to scale things down a bit. So we're going to take our layout guide and scale it by 0 0.4. There you go. Our heart is now smaller. Then we're going to give it a Y offset of 0.3 of the height of the rectangle. Y offset. We're going to take the height scaled minus 0 0.3. That's going to move it up a bit. Now all we're going to do is put this in a for loop or in, we're going to do four of them. And this is exactly actually what I mentioned we could do in the last section, where I mentioned that you can accumulate rotations. So I can say at the bottom of this iteration that G is equal to G rotated 90 degrees. So I've got all of this complex code that is creating our heart shape with our curves and our control points all over the place. And all I'm doing is doing exactly the same thing, but I'm just rotating the layout guide 90 degrees between each time. So everything that goes into creating that heart goes along for the ride. In fact, if I were to set debug to true, and and then say give it a stroke right there 
And look at that, you can still see all the control points are still there. It's still exactly the same. And if we animate this, you can see that they're doing exactly the right thing. They've just been transformed. So if I undo that, and I undo that, and there we have our hearts beautifully animating and four of them. What happens if I rotate them? 180 degrees. Kissing lips brought to you by Layout Guide Transformations. Well, there we go. An easy way of repeating entire shapes or parts of shapes to take your designs to the next level. I mean, I say the next level. I think by this point, we're already at the penthouse when it comes to designing shapes in Swift UI. But in the next episode, we're going to take it even further. We're going to continue up the stairs. We're going to get to the helipad. We're going to get to the chopper. Take to the air because we're going to be combining layout guides to drive design and the animations. So join me for that. It's going to be brilliant. If you like that, then give it a thumbs up because it helps people find the channel and puts a smile on my otherwise entirely miserable face. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, then consider subscribing and that's what you'll get. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time. <laughs>